Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Diagnostic Feature. My name is Frank Massey. Over the next few issues, we're going to serialise various elements of our training courses to give an insight to both process and procedure. I hope you enjoy this feature. Let's now take a look at some of the components. I'd like to begin with the hydraulic components. The module is based on Bosch systems. That doesn't detract from the fact that the process and procedures that you're witnessing cannot be applied to other control systems. I, I made the point earlier that the functionality and process is virtually identical. There are slight variations in control and location, um, which, which are of consideration, but the actual functionality doesn't change. I've chosen Bosch not because of any favour towards this system, just that the two vehicles we've chosen for the filming in this presentation lend themselves very nicely for ease of access and visibility, which we consider as prime importance in, in a visual training programme. This is a early variant of a Bosch common rail system, what we call CP1. It employs a three-piston hydraulic pump so effectively there are three pumping chambers in this device. This is what's referred to as a pressure controlled system. The device at the back of the pump is referred to as a DRV, diesel regulation valve or uh, drug regulating, regulating ventricle. It basically closes off the escape circuit, building up pressure, it's controlled electronically, which is the Second functionality consideration. This has a device called a third piston cutoff, so this particular pump can actually disengage one of the pumping elements. It's driven, in our case, uh, by the camshaft, uh, although the pumps can be driven by a number of means, but essentially it's timed to the engine uh, or driven by the engine, either directly by mechanical means or by a belt. And you'll find different locations of pumps. Um, mainly down to engine design and the amount of available space in the engine bay. So that's the very early type of pump. What I'd like to do next is develop how the system's evolved into some of the later variants. The next pump I've chosen, although there were other slight variants of the pump we've just discussed, this is um, CP3, CP3H evolution of pumps. And these also come in a variety of, uh, of physical um, uh, stages of development. This pump has several improvements, if you like, on the early type of system. And one of the improvements is that this particular pump uses volume or inlet low pressure control. Uh, referred to as an MPROP valve by Bosch. It can also be called inlet metering valve, or in some cases, a suction valve. By controlling the amount of volume, effectively you control pressure. So you increase volume, you'll increase pressure. Reduce volume, you'll reduce pressure. So that is an inlet metering low pressure control valve. On the back of the pump, in this case, in this variant, that is a mechanical, I'm gonna call it a vacuum or suction pump it creates a very healthy vacuum to assist the drawing, I'm going to use the word drawing of fuel from the fuel tank. This type of pump is often assisted with a low pressure lift pump and or a high pressure intermediate pump as well as this particular device. So the low pressure priming stage can in some cases be in three sections, low pressure lift, intermediate high pressure and the suction assist pump at the back of the high pressure stage. So effectively this pump has um, a suction device, a low pressure stage and a three piston high pressure stage. Once again, there are three pumping elements in that pump. Once again, driven mechanically by the engine. And we have another slight variation on that. In fact, let's leave that one there for the moment. You'll see the, the family generation or res resemblance here is very obvious. This particular pump is identical to the BMW which we're going to be using a little later on in the module. 
So although you won't see this pump on the vehicle because of its location, this is the type of pump. The only difference is, once again, it's a CP3, CP3H variant, inlet metering control, suction or volume control on the low pressure stage. There is, however, no suction device on the back of this pump. Therefore, the priming system with this particular pump will be more robust than that. In other words, the responsibility of providing or, or producing fuel to the pump is down to electronic pumps or electrical pumps, both in the tank and built intermediate uh, within the chassis. Otherwise, very much the same. Driven by the engine, the drive mechanism may be different. Still has a low pressure stage and a high pressure stage. So you can see the resemblance there um, quite nicely. The next component is certainly common to all common rail systems. This is the rail or accumulator. Technically, it's a storage device. It stores a volume of fuel at the required pressure. It's part of the high pressure circuit. So if I just bring one of the pumps back in, <clears throat> Once the pump has generated the correct pressure, the high pressure output through a steel hose is connected to the rail. From the rail, via steel hoses, is the injector circuit. So we'll have an injector with an individual fuel supply. It's a common storage. So the common part of the common rail is the storage capability. Each injector is controlled individually, but the supply of fuel is common. The generation of fuel pressure is common within the pump. So within the hydraulic stage, we can break this down into three distinct phases. Now this is the real crucial crux of the process. first most important, well not most important stage, but the first consideration diagnostically is storage. What's in the tank? Uh, I'm talking about quality and quantity and how does it get to the, to the high pressure stage? How does it get from the tank to the high pressure pump? High pressure generation. What is the mechanical functionality and capabilities of the pump and is the control, in other words, the electronic control, operating correctly? And the third stage is high pressure storage and delivery. High pressure storage is the rail and avoidance of leakage or decay the system should not decay fuel that is outside the normal control parameters. So that's storage. And delivery, of course, is the functionality of the injector, which covers its hydraulic functionality, the actual ability of, of, of atomizing and delivering fuel correctly, and electronic control by the control solenoid. So those are the three critical elements and we'll be going back to that particular three elements as we progress through the training module. So we've dealt with um, the rail and an injector. Whilst I'm on the injectors, um, there's obviously various types of injectors. That is a standard solenoid controlled injector and we'll come to the functionality of that later on. This is a variant. It is still a solenoid control injector. This is a Delphi injector and this has quite a unique and very interesting additional control functionality. With the Bosch system, the control of pressure essentially is done, or the rail pressure, in other words, the pressure generated in the accumulator or rail, is a direct function of pump control. With the Delphi system, it's a shared responsibility. The pump is responsible for generating pressure, but they also use the injector 
to fine tune or control the pressure in the rail. And they do that by firing a current at the control solenoid at very high speed. And that has the ability of, for want of a better expression, bleeding fuel out of the rail in very, very acute minute amounts. And that trims the pressure in the rails. So that's quite a, uh, an innov innovative and unique means of controlling fuel pressure. So it's worth mentioning that. Although that is a Delphi injector, not Bosch. I've mentioned the two types of control devices. These are both Bosch devices, but once again, these types of devices are common across all common rail manufactured systems. I mentioned, first of all, the pressure regulating valve, or DRV. It's a coil, therefore a, a solenoid. It's controlled by duty, on off. In this case, the more it, it, this, this particular device is ground switched. Ground is on. On means it will consume current, which means it will drive the valve in, and in closes the escape route. So as that's driven in, it closes the escape route, which invariably then allows the pump to increase pressure. So it's a duty control valve, and within this part of the assembly is, is a needle or valve device which restricts the escape route of the fuel. That's a DRV, pressure regulation. Pressure regulation can be built on the pump or on the back of the rail. The location may vary. The next device I mentioned was the volume regulation device. That was mounted, if you recall, on the later generation pump, CP3, CP3H. This is an inlet control device, low pressure control. It's still controlled by duty. However, to increase flow, this valve is open. They're allowed to open more. It's driven in the same as this valve, but when you drive this valve in, you restrict supply. Therefore, you reduce pressure. So although both of these devices are driven in the same direction, they have the exact opposite control functionality. You drive this in, it increases pressure. You drive this in, it reduces pressure. So for full system pressure, this valve will be allowed to open fully and that valve will be closed fully. Main difference is this works at low pressure. Therefore, the physical stress on it is less. It consumes more current. It's a larger device because it allows uh, volume to flow rather than a small device controlling pressure. So this operates at whatever priming system pressure is available in the supply circuit. That's a DRV or suction valve or inlet metering valve. In some cases, Siemens, as one example, you can have both devices actually fitted to the high pressure pump. So as I said, the location may change. What I'd like to do next, perhaps, is look at some of the pure electronic components. These, what we've looked at so far, is mainly the hydraulic functionality, although these are both hydraulic and electronic. So remember that when you do get a fault with a system, you have to differentiate between the high possibilities of a hydraulic fault or electronic control. That's one of the challenges of common rail. I hope you've enjoyed this feature, and we'll continue to follow the series throughout the various magazines. For further information on face-to-face -face and DVD training, visit the AutoInform website or call the phone number on the screen. I look forward to seeing you in further issues.